the wind will blow, the rain can pour, the deluge break, the tempest roars, but in that storm, my spirit sings, shelter me. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Are you serious? Are you serious? Everybody get some coffee and calm down. The volcanoes are exploding under the sea. Mike from around the world told us all, did he not, for the last three months, you better watch under the ocean. We kept saying, well, what about Yellowstone? No, 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 no. Watch the ocean. Well, what about the Cascadia subduction zone? No, 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 no. Watch the ocean. Paul, watch the oceans. Watch the oceans. Then he, what did he say? What did he say? What did he say? On Friday, I mean, Thursday night, he said, uh, uh, Pastor Paul, this is it. What's about to happen soon, this is it. Planet X is getting close enough now to have visible effects 
What happened? The earth tilted on Thursday. It tilted. No, 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 no. It was not a pole shift. That's easy. A earth, a planet tilt. What? And, and so all of the GPS systems in the world had to be recalculated. And then what happens on Saturday morning on the Sabbath? God reaches deep down inside the heart, the bowels of the earth, and he releases his magnificent power. You know what? They, <laughs> they, they said, Izzy, they said that the ash went eight miles in the air, but I found out this, this evening, they released the report, it was 20 kilometers. That's about 12 maybe 12 and a half miles. That's insane. You know when you're in an airplane at 35,000 feet or whatever, you're at six, almost 7,000 miles. I mean, excuse me, six, six, seven, six or seven miles. Just imagine ash going t double that past you, but it came from the below the sea. That's insane. I don't, oh, by the way, Israel Hall is producing today's broadcast and I threw like nine things at him right the last second. But uh, he's got his buddy in here tonight, and that is all the way from Seattle, Washington, or close to that area, the great Jeffrey Claire Coper. That's right. I, I know how to say his name. <laughs> I can say his name right because he taught me. He taught me yesterday at the football game. He said, "Pastor, Pastor, it's not called Pepper, okay? Love you, but it's just not called Pepper." And I said, <laughs> "I said." Well, I don't want to mess it up. Help me, you know, write it down. You know, like I'm hooked on phonics, you know, kind of thing. And he said, just think of it this way. Claire, okay, like Claire Shampoo, you know, Claire Coper. Claire Coper. So now I got, I wrote it down right here. It's at the top of my notes. It's on the top of my notes. Jeffrey spelt with a J, which his name is really Jeffrey with a G. But that's so I won't forget. Jeffrey Claire Coper. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, we got a lot going on tonight. Anyway, he's going to be singing for us tonight uh, along with Israel Hall. They're going to be unplugged, uh, sitting in there right in just a few, in a little bit, and they're going to be singing some songs for us tonight, unplugged, which I think to me, you know, that's like one of the greatest artistic things. Remember James Taylor? Yeah, you know him. Sweet Caroline. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. You, you know how uh, I, I love, just forget their, what they sing about. Don't get into their politics. But I love to just listen to James Taylor sit down on a stool with a guitar and sing. And I like to hear Don McLean do it. Okay. I actually like to hear Blake Shelton do it. But I like to hear Jeffrey Claire Coper and Israel Hall do it better than anybody in the world. And you're going to get to hear both of them tonight. So, and on a matter of fact, Jeffrey's going to be singing a song that I'm going to be recording on my next album called The Wandering Preacher Man. So he's going to be singing that for us in a little bit. Now, let's get back to where we're at here. First of all, noblegoldinvestment.com. I almost forgot those guys. You know what? They're going to be crying. I'm going to get the emails and everything. No, seriously, they're great guys. It's a Christian company, they're family owned. Uh, and uh, noblegoldinvestment.com. Look, guys, who knows? With the stock market's up, the interest rates are down, you know. Uh, inflation's up, Bitcoin's down, houses are selling, but people can't get loans, shelves are bare, but people, unemployment's low, but nobody comes to work. Somebody, it's not working for me. It's not adding up. What does this mean? Aren't you, do you got all your eggs in one basket in your 401k? It's time to diversify. And the thing to do is go to noblegoldinvestment.com. That's www.noblegoldinvestment.com. And, um, or pick up the phone tomorrow morning. Pick up the phone, 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. And tell them Pastor Begley sent you over there. If you do, if you do and you qualify and you set up a gold IRA, Colin will send you this beautiful commemorative American Eagle coin. And this one is one-tenth of an ounce pure gold, pure gold. He'll send that to you for free just as a gift to show you his appreciation and the fact that you've just now made a wise decision. All right, that's noblegoldinvestment.com. All right, guys, here's the deal. We're gonna show some footage right now. I wanna go to the screen. You can't, this, this is insane. Let me go, let me find it. I'm sorry about that, is. Okay, uh, no, uh, here we go. All right, check this out, check this out, check this out, check this out. Full screen it is, I'll, uh, yeah, I can do it. Look at this, watch this PBT technology. Oh man, I'm getting good, guys. Okay, now <laughs> watch this. You see the screen? 
Do you see the screen? That is a still shot of the explosion from the bottom of the sea. But check this out, guys, in this video. You're going to see satellite pictures. Everything. Check this Boom out. Boom of ash, steam, and gas rising up from the ocean what? near Tonga. See that lightning? The result of a huge eruption from an underwater volcano. Mm. So powerful that images of it were captured by satellites Whoa, orbiting the Earth. Whoa, are you serious? Jeez. While its impact was felt 500 miles away in Fiji. It also caused a shock wave, which is an atmospheric pressure Whoa. wave, which is more visible in the, in the satellite. Field. I like so this guy, he's got a bad haircut. Bad haircut, day. bad haircut. Sorry. Look at that wave coming in. What's this dude right here? Can you see my screen? Do you see that dude right there? Do you guys see that? What is he doing? Okay, let's move on. Not long after the blast, a tsunami hit Tonga. Oh, I'm sorry, with I was waves a pole. crashing through streets and buildings. Whoa! Washing through homes and a church, forcing people to escape to higher ground and cutting off most communication to the outside world. One resident was able to make contact, saying she was okay, but concerned for people living in a low-lying area close by. The huge rolling, cresting waves that seem to go in the direction of a very low-lying settlement. So this series of tsunamis will have given them a major problem. There's thousands of people up in that area on a narrow peninsula, so I'm very concerned for those people. Tsunami warnings spread to places as far away as Australia, Japan, Chile, and the west coast of America. Get off the beach. This is a tsunami warning. Authorities in California urging people to get off the beach just before flooding started there too. Back in Tonga, there will now be an agonizing wait to discover the full scale of this disaster and the welfare of those caught up in it. Mark McQuillan, ITV News. That was uh, incredible, and I have to say, ITV News uh, really did a good job. Okay, they whoops, uh, they really did a good job. Okay, now the thing is about this that uh, I was very upset at the news the the news coverage of this whole thing. I really was because. Pastor Melvin Weddington and I were driving back from Orlando, Florida, back to the villages. It takes about an hour drive from the football game. And we we had done a video letting you guys know 25 minutes after it happened that this was huge. But we're driving back from Orlando, and we've got the radio on. I mean, we're, we're, we're scanning every one of the major cable news networks to tell us about the tsunami. Not, for one hour, nobody... Nobody spoke about this thing, about this volcano, the tsunami threaten, threatening the West Coast, guys. And listen to this. Where's the emergency uh, broadcasting system? Where's FEMA? Where's, where was all of the uh, uh, emergency systems to... Uh, where was the media? Where was the media... When this, what if this thing was 15 foot high waves? It was three and four. Two people drowned, we know, then died in Brazil. We got that information just before I came over here. Heidi and I were talking about it. And Lord knows how many people were killed in the Tonga area and all those little islands around there. We have no idea yet, guys. Because it just this thing was insane. What I'm saying is, why did the media not think this was important all day Saturday? Is it because... I mean, when you have a volcano that big under the under the ocean with that type of power magnitude, you, this is the biggest story of the day. They don't want you to know about Planet X, the effects of Planet X, because if you if that this isn't okay, they know they know they can't say Begley's a conspiracy theorist. You know he's doom and gloom. And, uh, and the fumes and the blooms. No, they can't do that no more, and they know it. Because I don't have to set the agenda no more. God has already set it. I'm not a sensationalist. Because you, what do you want me to do? We're record volcanoes this year. Record earthquakes this year. Record 
uh, uh, floods and cyclones and typhoons and huge F5 or F6 or F7, whatever that tornado was, it ripped through Kentucky. No, 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 no. I don't have to say anything. I don't have to even say anything. God is setting the stage. So where's the media? You see, the media can't explain to you that an incoming binary system that's shaking the heavens and the earth, go to the Bible, Luke chapter 21, verse 25. Look at this. The Bible plainly says, this is the words of Jesus. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity or confusion. The sea and the waves will be roaring Men's hearts are failing them for fear. Men's hearts are failing them for fear. Men's hearts are failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Let's look at this again. And for those, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the Son of Man. Look up. Then shall they see the Son of Man. Keep looking up. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, look up. Not Don't do like the movie, don't look up. Look up. Lift up your heads, your redemption draweth nigh. Okay, this is huge. And then he goes right into the fig tree generation. We don't even have to read that. I'm telling you right now that what's taking place is biblical prophecy unfolding right before your very eyes. Now go with me to the book of Joel. I want to read a little bit from Joel 2. We got a lot to talk about tonight. Let's just take Joel 2 10. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executed this word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. Oh, Pastor Begley, that's so negative. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to be honest with you here, okay? Uh, we can see the day coming. Uh, so we better get right with God. And oh, oh preachers, by the way, look at verse 17. Let the priest and the ministers of the Lord. Let the priest and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar. And let don't throw another Super Bowl party. Find time to pray. Well, I, 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 calm down, Paul. I know. Is this coffee jacked up? Am I jacked up? It's, it, it, oh, thank you. I'm going to thank our moderators tonight for having to manage the uh, reaction to the congregation. This is not a fluffy, puffy channel. And your set is not vibrating for no reason. It's called the warning of God, the, the Holy Ghost of God. Now listen, I just preached a message this morning at the Big Ten here in the Freedom Fellowship and called the Royal Kingdom. The whole message was about who we are in Christ Jesus. And you know what? I didn't even scratch the surface. I barely got out of John 3, 16. I could barely get us into the kingdom, let alone what we can do in it. I mean, I barely got us in. Do you understand what it means to be a child of God? Do you understand there's no fear in us? Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Greg, I'm telling you, if God be for us, who can be against us? We're wearing robes made white in the precious blood of the Lamb. We've come out of darkness into the marvelous light. Uh, we're walking in high cotton. Seriously. And I'm going to say to you right now, Listen to what the Lord says to the priests and the, and the preachers. He says, now, priests and ministers, I need you between the porch and the altar. I need you laying prostrate before the face of my throne and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore, should they say among the people, where is their God? 
Then will the Lord be jealous in his land and pity his people. And the Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith, and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. Let me just say something. A lot of people are saying, well, when things get really rough and the economy starts to, and the Great Reset and, 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 and 666 and all this other stuff, wonder what's going to happen to the Christians. I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen to Christians. We're blessed and highly favored. See, you don't know what, no, time out, time out. What people don't understand, we don't operate in the world's kingdom because we're in a royal kingdom. I ain't got time to preach this right here. If I get started on this, we're going to have to stay here all night. And just What I'm saying is God is going to take care of his own. He said that he said the birds of the air have nest. He said, look at, look at them. They don't either toil. Nor, they don't even worry. For, for the Lord feeds the sparrow. How much more are you than the birds? I'm going to have Jeffrey Claire Coper come in and sing a song for us because I'll tell you something. Uh, we're right living in a day where we do need some more wandering preacher men. We, we, we are in a time now when we need some, uh, once again, some fire and brimstone, if you will. It wouldn't hurt us none to get a little bit of fire and brimstone uh, anointing out there. But at the same time, it's preached and it's reached out with the, the love of God. And so there's some wandering preacher men in the, in the Bible. Boy, I tell you what, but the best one of all, he saved for last. Check this out. This is Jeffrey uh, Claire Coper singing Wandering Preacher Man. Hey, Pastor Paul. Oh, great to have you today. I'm, I'm really honored to uh, have you uh, to do a cover of this on your upcoming album. I am so stoked. You're going to put that, uh, what are you serious flavor on it? I'm going to, you know, you're a great songwriter. This song touched me. The first time I heard it, I said, oh, <laughs> I, I, got, I, got, I got to be able to sing that song. I got to record that. Well, so that, well that, I mean, that's <laughs> Wandering Preacher Man. That was Izzy and I this last week because I officially moved from Washington to Florida. So congratulations. We, we wandered, and... wandered our way across the entire country and literally God opened up the weather, the roads, everything was perfect. So Amen. Glad to be here. Great to have you, amen. I love the guitar, by the way. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right, Wandering Preacher Man. John spent his days walking up and down the Jordan Preparing a pathway for the Lord He cried out to the people A message of repentance The kingdom of heaven in his words Confess your sins, that time is right Come on in and get baptized And on the side of redemption you will stand This was the mission of the John the Baptist The wandering preacher man On the road to Damascus With trouble in his heart Saul was the meanest guy around But the good Lord saw right through him And it was time for a change In a flash of light he knocked him to the ground He would never be the same So he spread the truth with his new name A message of redemption across the land This was the mission Of the apostle named Paul A wandering preacher man Woo! Wow! Everyone can be 
a wanderer and preacher, man. He's got to take your ministry on the road. That's right. He walked from town to town, teaching truth to the people. The author of creation, flesh and bone. He showed the world the fullness of his glory. He called all sinners to come home. The Son of God had been sent. He was crucified and rose again. Our redemption resting in his hands. This is the message of our Lord Jesus, the wandering preacher man. Preacher man, our Lord is a preacher man. Yeah! Beautiful, brother. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you, sir. Amen, folks. There he is. That's Jeffrey Claire Coper. And of course, uh, he wrote that song. He wrote that song. And I'm so blessed and privileged to be able to record that coming up, my new album coming up. So it's going to be a great collaboration. You're not going to believe it, how the good the songs the Lord's blessing us with to record on an album. So you get ready for that one. All right, folks, uh, let me just say right now, welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. We've got a lot to get to tonight. Also, Israel Hall is going to be singing for us also. And, uh, and Jeffrey will be back a little bit later in the broadcast. Now, one thing you're going to say, let's go back to the scriptures, if we could, because I want to go back to Joel, because God was telling his people, he was preparing them for the signs of these last days. And Mike from the world has been doing the same thing when he's been telling us that there's this binary system coming. Really, basically, what that binary system is doing is fulfilling biblical scriptures. It's causing the actual events to happen. And scientists have known this. Oh, they've hid it from us forever. But they've, they've known it. They just haven't. Uh, they don't want you to know. Because if you know, panic breaks. The world will panic. But Christians won't. The world will. Let's read it. In Joel chapter 2, verse 21. Fear not, O land, be glad and uh, rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the, catter, the, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army among you which I sent to you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Did you read that again? You will be, it's good in plenty. You will eat in plenty and be satisfied. Okay, praise the name of the Lord your God for that has dwelt, dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. You know what this means? Never go without. Never have lack. He keeps reminding us, you'll never be ashamed. My people will never be ashamed. They'll never be without. They'll never go with, with lack. I will supply every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I'm telling you right now, God is the God of blessing. He is the God of blessing. He is the God of favor. I'm telling you now, to have favor with God is greater than having favor with man. It, you're better off to, to be walking in the anointing of God during these last days. Actually, you have no idea what God's about to do. 
He's going to show off, folks. He is going to bless his people going in, coming in, and coming out. And then we're going to see the mighty healing hand of God. Let me prophesy to you right now. I don't care if the doctors won't see you again. I don't care if the pharmacists run out of run out of meds. I don't care if they don't have a surgeon in the land. There's a great physician who's going to send and supply every need, every situation, every problem. There's nothing too uh, 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 too big that God can't handle, and nothing too small He don't care about. So give your life to Jesus Christ and get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, because the King at kings the lord of lords is coming back and he's coming after them that are in i just got i'm pumped up you know what i'm just pumped up i'm jacked up i'm I'm ready to go up that service we had this morning in the big tent here at freedom fellowship it just i don't know what happened the lord just took over it was a mighty move of god if you haven't seen it you should check it out on the archives at uh at ffctv.info it was amazing but not everybody's ready the effects of planet X are taking place now. They are the biblical birthing pains of the coming of Jesus Christ. And I'm not sensationalizing it. Did you know that, you remember the La Palma? La 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 Palma. Da la 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 Palma volcano. La 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 Palma lava flow. Remember that? It flowed and it flowed and it flowed and it blowed and it blowed and it blowed. And the earth shook and the mountain quaked. But when the, when the, when the uh, report was given out, when they gave the report of the total earthquakes, the total earthquakes in the world, they said, oh, 2021 had a little less earthquakes than we did in 2020. It's the first time in about 40 years that the earthquake number went down. That's not true. It's not true, Izzy. It's not true. You want you want to know why? They never counted the la 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 palma. Na, na, na. La 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 palma. They didn't la 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 palma. They never counted the earthquakes that that volcano was shaking and quake. They they they, they did not. They see nothing. They hear nothing. They wrote nothing down. <laughs> what are these dudes doing? So let me just say something right now. I mean, I'm trying. I'm trying to be serious here because I'm not a sensationalist. I'm just saying. You wonder why they didn't write down all the earthquakes of La Palma? Because if, when, if you add it to the rest of the earthquakes that they did write down, it blows away the record of earthquakes in a single year. And more volcanoes erupted than ever in a single year. And meteorites and asteroids and fireballs raging and racing and and... and and then you, oh, I don't even, I'm not even going to bring up the pandemic. I, I, I'm not even going to bring that up. And we got uh, uh, shortages of food and shortages of this. It started with the toilet paper. It just keeps, man, you know, it just keeps going. Nobody can drive a truck and nobody can unload a, a, a boat and nobody can do this. And I, I'm just not buying it. So this looks to me like, it really does look to me like this is a manufactured famine, and they're and and, and they're and they're skewing the numbers. You can't believe any of the numbers you see. Death rates, can't believe it. Uh, total uh, earthquakes, can't believe it. You just can't believe it. So here's what I'm doing. I, so what do you do in a world where the media? Where first of all, the media doesn't even cover a volcano of biblical proportion. They don't even cover it. But they cover everything else. The talking heads are everywhere. But when it's really, when you start talking about, when you start talking about the signs of the end times, when you start looking at the very prophetic, look, you know what the Bible says over here in, uh, look at this. Let me go back to Joel. Go back to Joel. Check this out. Joel 3. Oh, I'm going to throw this on Israel. Joel 3. No, no, no. Joel 2. Stay there, Is Joel 2. Sorry. Joel 2, 28. And the Bible says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Thank God. 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants, upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Are you part of that remnant, church? Are you a remnant believer? Now, while you're there, look at verse, look at chapter 3. For behold, in those days, which days? The last days that we're just reading about. And in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. I have to remind people, who did the parting of the land? It was not the Jews. They've been trying to get it back. They've been waiting. They even asked Jesus. And he said, Lord, have you come to restore the nation of Israel? And he said, that's not for you to know the time or the seasons, for that's in my Father's power. But I, I'll tell you this, you are, you're, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You'll be witnessed in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, read on down. Look, we stay in chapter 3. Look at this. Look at this. Go down, go down to verse 15. The sun, well, go to 14. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. The stars shall withdraw their shining. And the Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her any more. It shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drop down like new wine. The hills shall flow with milk. The rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and the fountain shall uh, come forth of the house of the Lord. And shall the waters, the valley of Shittim, be careful. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. I'm telling you, this is serious. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. It's, it's a great scriptures to read, to understand, and, and, and feel the poetry of it. Feel the, 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 the passion that God has for humanity. And so I'm here to tell you right now, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Look at this. Let's, speaking of earthquakes, for those of you who got here late, since there's 2,000 of you here, I'm going to do this. Israel, we're going to show them. We're going to show them the, uh, the, 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 the check out this. Okay, here we go. Look at this, guys, from the volcano. Uh, can I go full screen? Oh, Paul Bagley technology. Are you serious? You guys aren't going to let me go? Oh. A huge plume of Whoa! ash, steam, and gas rising up from the ocean near Tonga. The result of a huge eruption from an underwater volcano. So powerful that images of it were captured by satellites orbiting the Earth. Whoa! While its impact was felt 500 miles away in Fiji. It also caused a shock wave, which is an atmospheric pressure wave, which is what were visible in the in the satellite footage. So that is something. After the blast, a Whoa! tsunami hit Tonga with waves crashing through streets and buildings, washing through homes and a church, forcing people to escape to higher ground and cutting off most communication to the outside world. 
One resident was able to make contact, saying she was OK, but concerned for people living in a low-lying area close by. The huge rolling, cresting waves that seem to go in the direction of a very low-lying settlement. So this area of tsunamis will have given them a major problem. There's thousands of people up in that area on a narrow peninsula, so I'm very concerned for those people. Tsunami warnings spread to places as far away as Australia, Japan, Chile and the west coast of America. Get off the beach. This is a tsunami warning. Authorities in California urging people to get off the beach just before flooding started there too. Back in Tonga there will now be an agonising wait to discover the full scale of this disaster and the welfare of those caught up in it. You know, it really is sad, uh, but it could have been a lot worse. I'm going to be honest with you. It could have been way, way worse. I think God's, and, and we don't know how many people died. We know two people are dead in Brazil from the tsunami. But, I mean, I think that it's uh, we're going to find the numbers in the next few days because that's such a remote part of the world. We'll be uh, in the hundreds. I, I, I hope not. I really hope not. Matter of fact, let's go to the earthquake map while we're at it because... Let's check this out, guys. The In the last 24 hours, we have had 44 earthquakes. Let me uh, spread this map out just a little bit, give you more view. You'll see that um, all the way down here, we had a 4.3. Indonesia, follow the little blue dot. Hawaii had a quake. Puerto Rico always seems to have one, 3.7. 4.8, Iran. Toya, Texas, 2.6. Uh, 4.4 in Azerbaijan. 4.6, Iran. Uh, of course, White City, New Mexico, always seems to be getting quakes now. Toya, Texas again. There's Dixon, Wyoming with a 2.9. Vanuatu, 5.3. Uh, Toya, Texas again. 4.6, Indonesia, 4.1. Up there in Alaska, 2.5, Taiwan. This is in Mexico, 2.7. We also see another Hawaii quake. Look at this. There's an Oklahoma earthquake of 2.6 and very shallow, only 3.3 kilometers. We had a 5.5 in Greece, 4.6 in Greece, 6.1 Papua New Guinea, 4.0 Greece, 4.3 Romania, and uh, there's California having a quake. Uh, Tonga, that's from the, that's the aftershocks of the volcano, 4.6. And then we had, uh, again, 4.4 Peru, 4.2 Greece, 4.1 Turkey. Look at this, 3.5 in F Fern Forest, Hawaii. And then 4.5 Greece again, 5.3 Mexico, strong quake. California, 3.1. And uh, on it goes. 5.0 we just had in Indonesia. That's the earthquake map. So the earth is definitely shaking and quaking, and the devil's back is breaking. We're keeping a close eye on all of that. Where am I at? Publicly technology. Oh, and so, you know, as we keep watching what's going on, we see that there is significant... And Mike was right! I mean, uh, that's why we titled this. Mike was right! Again! So we know he has inside intel, and we also know that he's a, a child of God, and it also he does get pro pro prophetic words as well from the Lord. So I think overall, I think God's uh, using him to help not only us, but many of you out there to understand that the things that the Bible said are coming are absolutely true. There's no denying it. We're living in the last days. Also, I know that this synagogue situation was huge. And I'd like to share some about that um, at the top of the hour. But I'm going to wait till the second hour because it's uh, very significant. We now know the name. Well, let's do this. We know the name. We know the name of the, uh, of the gunman. He's been identified. The FBI identifies the hostage taker at Texas Synagogue. Check this out. The FBI on Sunday has identified Malik Fazel Ekram, and that's Malik Fazel Ekram, a 44-year-old British national 
a man who held four people hostage at a Texas synagogue for 11 hours standoff Saturday before the rescue team entered the building and killed the suspect, which is exactly what Melvin Whittington told me last night was going to happen. So they'll talk, 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 creep, 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 creep. Remember, this is Texas. And then uh, they'll offer him pizza, shoot him, and it's over. If, he, if they don't, he kills all the hostages and then shoots himself. That's kind of a scenario you don't want to see, okay? So, but what I want to know, and I'm going to ask the media. Don't ask me. I'm asking you, media. Why does it take almost 24 hours to give us his name? I know you have to scrub Facebook. You got to scrub the internet. You got to scrub. You got to make up new stories and post them. You got to do a lot of things to try to prevent from saying this was a terrorist act or some kind of hate crime against the Jews. Well, let me just read this: the uh, the FBI hostage rescue team killed Akram after the hostages were released about nine o'clock. The agency said crime scene investigators at the Beth Israeli congregation in Colleyville, Texas. That's about 50 miles from Fort Worth. They recovered one firearm they believe belonged to Akram, uh, according to a spokesman from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Prayers were answered. All hostages are out alive and safe, thank God, says Governor Greg Abbott. And um, about 20 minutes after a large bang and gunfire were heard in the direction of the synagogue. Now, the resolution came nearly 11 hours after Akram entered the synagogue uh, and it was a live streaming Sabbath service going on there. Imagine that. Four people have been f released and freed, including Rabbi Charlie uh, Kytron Walker. Uh, they were initially taken hostage. Also, um, so thank God this thing ended the way it ended. Okay? Thank God it's over. And I think that when you start looking at all the things that are happening in the world, you can see that we're living in the days that the Bible said would come to pass. We're living in perilous times. Before we get to the top of the hour, where I'm going to tell you more information about what's going on around the world, we're going to also bring in Israel Hall, who's producing tonight's broadcast. He's going to have him sing tonight, because I tell you what, it's been a great blessing. Uh, and <clears throat> he is he's on fire right now. He's, uh, he just seems to be doing involved in everything. The praise and worship at the, uh, at the Big Tent is just incredible. It's, it's, uh, I don't want to say it's the best praise and worship anywhere in the country. And then also, he's working on producing an album for Kevin Wilson, and he's working on producing an album for me. In his spare time, I guess. Um, uh, I'm glad he's not real busy. Uh, but one thing about Izzy... He's so famous now that they're naming Super Blizzards after him. Blizzard Izzy, which would happen to be Mike from around the world. That was another one of the things Mike said was going to happen. He said, two weeks, you're going to have a super, a super Blizzard. And exactly two weeks to the day we had one. I think maybe it's time that we start recognizing that the signs of the last days that Jesus prophesied would come to pass are happening right before our very eyes. Well... Israel, I don't even know what song you're going to sing for us today. Great to have you. Good to be back with you again. Thank you, Pastor. I, uh, well, every every new day is an adventure with you. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do either. <laughs> we just show up and do it. I, I'm uh, so sorry. I forget sometimes. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Jeffrey for uh, manning the board in there while while I'm out here doing this. Usually, I don't have somebody to do that for me. So. Um, I'm going to do a song that I wrote here that we've done at church a couple of times. God, I'm so scared For this crooked generation Will you even find faith in the earth When you bring down revelation Don't give us now the sins of our youth For worshiping the idols that knew Everything but the truth and Teach us how to uncorrupt our minds To 
eat just now We still have the time We need you Yeshua Holy, holy, hallelujah We need you Yeshua Holy, holy, hallelujah We abandon everything To follow you, our King We throw our gold and silver in the streets How much will we see? Before the fire falls, Lord, could this really be the last altar call? We need your blood over the doorpost of our hearts. Anoint us with your fiery love as the praise and worship starts. We need you. That's what I'm talking about right there. Beautiful, Izzy. Beautiful. When did you write that song? Um, about eight months ago. Yeah. I started writing in the car while I was driving you home. Yeah, I know. I remember that. You just started doing it, and I'm like, whoa, what? It, whoa, 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 whoa. He said, yeah, I'm working on that. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> just one of those things that just came to me, you know? Well, the, so this, the truth in that song is just, uh, it just permeates right out of it. The fact that you know, people need to really understand, we need Yeshua. You can't work this thing out on your own. You can't do it yourself. And right. I think your music brings that um, and everything you do. I think that you've, uh, you've uh, you and your wife both are just uh, exemplify what Christianity is all about. I mean that from by my heart. Amen. I really do. Guys, uh, he's, a, he's a gifted prophecy guy in his own right. Trust me. Okay. Really, he really is. We need, to, we need to bring him on as a guest and just talk Bible prophecy with him. He really knows it. Well, here we are, guys. We're in the last days. I want to thank all of you that are here tonight, Sunday night live broadcast. And uh, going to hear from Jeffrey uh, Claire Coper in a few minutes as well again. Let me just say something quickly now. There's, there's things that are happening in the last days, the effects of Planet X. Oh, by the way, if you want to get their music, I, I forgot about that. If you want to get... Uh, their CD, formerly Jacob, formerly Jacob. It's at my website. You can go to my website and get their uh, CD right now. We'll ship it to you tomorrow. Uh, so you might want to do that. I'll tell you what, you, you put their music in in your car, in your CD player while you're driving on the road, and you'll just immediately go into worship, and you're going to stay in worship while you're driving. Uh, it's just beautiful. We're hearing from people all across the country, so definitely get your copy of that tonight. We are going to do, we are, uh, listen, the Lord spoke to Sister Heidi. We were talking about the effects of Planet X, and this was about mid-December, and the Lord spoke to us and said, you better hold, you can't wait till March for a webinar. You can't wait. You don't have time, okay? And that, that hit me hard when the Lord said, you don't have time. You better have a, a summit, get the most gifted, uh, Christian guys together to, to talk about what they know about the incoming Planet X. And folks, we did just that. We tracked down Gil Brazard, 
You guys know him. He's amazing. He's been studying. Uh, he's an amateur astronomer, and he's been studying um, Planet X and the, and the effects of it, and he's been trying to build a model of when this thing is going to be going by our solar system, but creating so much havoc that it may fulfill the biblical uh, breaking of the seals of the book of Revelation. And then there is uh, Mike from around the world who seems to be absolutely God is just revealing him plus the intel that he has. And he'll tell you that. Not everything he says is prophecy. Some of the things he tells us is information he has that he is able to release in riddles and rhymes on our broadcast. But it really helps us because us that know the Bible immediately start to gravitate to the word to figure it out. Thank God we can have that inside connection. Thank you, Jesus. And he'll be speaking in this. And then also, and I'll be interviewing him. Actually, there are four interviews. I'll interview Gil. I'll interview Mike. And then, of course, I'm going to be interviewing Stephen Ben Danoon. And Stephen, of course, brought the, he's the guy that brought the, the little green file out in the first place when we had the first The Heavens Are Shaking uh, conference out in Cincinnati, Ohio. Well, he's got more info now with his uh, contacts Inside, he's in the insider, let's say, and this information is so important. He's now working on the ancient scripts of the that have already been documented by past civilizations about the last time Planet X or Nibiru came by. This time it's closer. So see, this is what I'm saying. This could be bringing about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the rapture, maybe just around the corner, and then. We're going to have a guy we've never had before, Marshall Masters. Now, Marshall is a brilliant uh, IT specialist out of Silicon Valley. He retired in 1999. He's, he's a mensen. He's extremely brilliant. And with the inside information he has and his other contacts, plus the work he's done researching Planet X, he, too, has some inside info. So all these guys do. So that's why I'm saying... I, we can't just bring them out here and let them just turn them loose on the, uh, an open forum like this because we'll get we'll get uh, thrown under the bus by the uh, the cancel culture. But instead, we'll bring them all together uh, in a summit. So there's put it on the screen, guys. Get those tickets out there. Get people on it tonight. Don't hesitate. Get it done tonight. Get your ticket tonight. It's because how how come today is the 16th of January. This, comp, this summit starts in 12 days. If we got 12 days left. The doomsday clocks it in, in 100 seconds. You know, Dr. Lester Summerall kept reminding us all, remember what Jesus said, he said. In a day, in an hour, you think not the Son of Man cometh. Watch and pray, for you know not what day the hour of the Lord doth come. Now we can see the we can see the times and the seasons. We know that when the fig trees leaves are tender, that summer is nigh. We know that, and that's what we're seeing now. The birthing pains. I was preaching today under the big tent, and I said, "We're not in the first trimester. This isn't the second trimester. Oh yeah, we're not only in the third trimester. We're in the delivery room." Christ is coming. The birthing pains are on the whole world. I don't even know. You know what? This, this broadcast, I, you don't even need me. You don't even need me. God's got it. He's, he's putting it out there everywhere. He's just saying, look here, look at there, over here, over there. Jesus is about to, the Bible says, as lightning cometh from the east and to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Wow. Are you serious? Man, I tell you what. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Oh, by the way, before I forget, because, boy, I already did. The Public School of Prophecy starts tomorrow. Jeffrey Culp? Pepper. <laughs> Sorry, I accidentally did that. Jeffrey Claire Culper is actually going to be in the, in the Bible uh, school as well. He just signed up. He's going to be in it. And uh, we've got a lot of great students, but we've got great teachers. The teachers are great. So go to my website at paulbigleyprophecy.com right now and figure out which class you want to be in because you want to be in one, okay? At least one, if not more than one. So go over. Go to paulbigleyprophecy.com. Maybe get two. At least get two. That's right. You'll be in two. And, and study the Word. The Bible says study the Word, uh, you know, 
uh, it says, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering, doctrine of men will come who won't endure and sound doctrine, but after their, uh, their own lust, they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, they'll turn their ears from the truth and be turned into fables. Study the word to show, uh, uh, to show thyself approved. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I, I believe God's got a call on your life. So there's people out there watching right now. God has got a call on your life. I'm not saying that lightly either. When Dr. Lester Summerall called me out of a crowd of 500 in this, right in the heart of Jerusalem and said, and laid his hands on me, the power of God hit me. Wow. Begin to prophesy. Your ministry will grow. God will use you to touch the nations of the world. And he just kept, and I, you know what? I said to myself, I know this is a good man of God. I was laying there thinking, I know he's a true man of God, but the, how in the world is that going to happen? You know what I'm saying? But oh, you have little faith. Sometimes we doubt the very word, the very bread of heaven that's delivered to us. Thank God. God knows what he's doing. Can you say amen? Some of you be watching right now. I'm afraid you don't have much time left. This, I don't know why I'm saying this, but there are folks watching right now who will not be here this time next year. There's 2,044 people or something like that in, in this chat room right now. And I pray all of you are here. I pray you're all going to be raptured and ready to go to heaven. I, I'm asking God to send down his mercy and grace and to touch your heart and to you, you can be born into the kingdom. But not everybody is ready. And not everybody here is going to be alive this time next year. You say, well, that can't be me. I'm only this age or I'm only that age. Listen, folks, the Bible says it's appointed on men once to die and after this judgment. I don't know if I'm going to be here a year from now. I don't. Hope so. But either way, I'm ready to go, okay? I want to live to be a 99 and a, and a date. I, I want to be like Betty White, okay? But whether I live or whether I die, I belong to the Lord. We're in the end times. Look at the signs. Look at the signs. They're everywhere. T tonight, I'm going to say to you, you know what? There are people. This is the salvation station. We've talked about this many times. 5,800. 79 people gave their life to Christ live on the air. We prayed with them last year. God told me, he said, believe me for double this year. Believe me for it. I said, Lord, I don't know exactly how we're going to do that. They're fighting against this, the system, you know, they're, 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 they're censorship police, the AI bots, the cancel culture, the haters. He said, yeah, but if God be for you, who can be against you? Believe me, and I will speak the, speak the word, and it will reach the hearts. And tonight, I feel this way. I really do. I feel this way. There are people right now listening who are not saved, who need Jesus in your life. And you say, Pastor, do you think God could really save me? I mean, I've tried to do right. I've tried to do good. Look, I, today in the Big Tent, there was a, a, a man and wife came to me, been watching me for six years, been a faithful partners of publicly promised ministries, faithful tithers in the ministry. The lady said to me, she said, I, I'm also on Patreon and on your app. What else you got going? Because I want everything God's got. She's been following us for six years. They came all the way from Canton, Ohio, just to be with us today in church. Another man walked up from another city an hour away here in Florida. Young guy's been watching us for a couple years. His mother's been watching us for eight years. He'd spent time in prison. He'd been set free of drugs, set free of different types of things. God saved him, cleaned him up for the last 14 years. He's been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He came just to meet me today. I'm going to tell you something. There are people that are out there right now starving for a chance to have the gospel of Jesus Christ in their life. Why don't you do it tonight? I'm going to ask Jeffrey, if he would, to sing us a song right here, right now. And as he's singing, you type in the chat room, I want to be saved. We'll write your name down. Our moderator's in, in there to help me. I feel like there's a, a bunch yeah. of you. Let's do it now. Amen. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to get there and have almost doubting Thomas. You want well done, good, and faithful 
servant. Amen. This song is called All Praises Be.
Thank you, Jeffrey, so much. There's 18 of you who are saying, I want to be saved here tonight. And you know what? It's because God is speaking to your heart. You're making the greatest decision of your life. You know, uh, Jeffrey, you have another song about uh, what he did for me. Did you sing that to start this song? Was that the first song you sung? Um, no, no, you didn't. Oh, you mean the other one I was playing earlier? Yeah. Can you play that? Because I believe God is still speaking to hearts. It's such a beautiful song. Listen to this, folks. Is it, it's another one you wrote. Yeah, it's another yeah. one I wrote. It's called um, The Price. Yes. Yeah. If I knew that I would be betrayed, that a single kiss would seal away my fate in the dead of the night, I'd be beaten and bound. For no fault of my own and taken away If I knew That I'd be marked for death And march through these streets with my own cross That they'd hold me down and run me through with nails And hang me there to pay the highest cost If I knew How awful it would be I would not have died for me are my God and you are good far beyond the boundaries of the sea and every day I'm grateful and I will praise your name because you paid that price for me
you are my God and you are good Far beyond the boundaries of the sea And every day I'm grateful And I will praise your name Because you pay the price Every day I'm grateful And I will praise your name Because you paid the price for me Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Folks, uh, Jeffrey Claire Coper, and they also helped write this song along with Jeffrey was Rick Hyde who actually works in the sound room here. Yeah. Gave you, he gave you the idea for the song, didn't he? Yeah, no, uh, he and I were talking, and we, you know, we were just, we were just, you know, one of those real good heart-to-hearts? Right. And, uh, and he, and he said, he's like, he just had something pressing on his heart, and he said, man, you know, if I knew everything that was, was, was going on in that whole situation, he goes, I wouldn't have died for me. And he goes, maybe you can do something with that. And I was just like, I'm, pretty sure that I can and and sometimes it's like you have a mission or a message or something right and you you don't have that tagline or that hook like that that one piece to the puzzle that ties everything in and when he said man I would not have died for me it wow. it was like that that final piece and it was a couple days later it was it was Just done so, out of you. you know God 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 speaks in every way possible and all you got to do is kind of open up your ears and and listen but amen yeah amen well folks right now we know that there's at least 21 people here that want to be saved tonight i'm going to pray with every one of you and then we're going to have jeffrey sing one more song for us before we go uh and maybe maybe go back to the preacher man whatever it maybe have something else but let me just say this if you're here and you're not saved Thank God that you've decided to be saved, that you've made the decision. The Bible says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I heard the word tonight, Lord. I heard your message from on high. The preacher might have been preaching, but I heard your call. And I'm repenting of my sins, and I'm confessing my sins to God. And I'm asking Jesus Christ to set me free. Oh, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Lord, I know I'm not right. But I won't be a hypocrite about it. I want to get things right with you. I want to be dead honest with you, Lord, that I want my name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I don't deserve it there. But, Lord, if you'll forgive me of my sins, if you, Lord, as I'm confessing it to you right here, right now, if you'll, you'll, if you'll just let me in the door, if you'll just allow me to be part of the kingdom of God, I want to serve you because I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. And I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe. I believe that the stone was rolled away. I believe that death relinquished its hold on the broken three-day dead body of our Savior. And I believe he rose from the grave. I believe that he ascended to heaven and that he's coming back again soon and very soon. And I want to be ready. So right here, Right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus' precious name. Are you serious? Another one got saved too. Uh, Jeanette Jordan, that's 22. Welcome to the family of God. Your names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Light, Life tonight, and I'm excited for you. Praise God. And I'm going to say something. I want you to get baptized, find a pastor, find a church, 
somewhere in the community where you live. Tell them you got born into the kingdom or come on down here to the big tent. We'll baptize you down here in Florida or go over to my dad's church up in northern Indiana, the Community Gospel Baptist Church. I'll baptize you up there or he'll baptize you or one of them. Look, 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 look. Get, thank God for you. You're saved. That's the main thing. You're saved. As a matter of fact, this is the salvation station. Can somebody over there type, it's a salvation station. Are you serious? Let's take up our, we, I almost forgot about it, our Sunday night tithe and offering. It's, it's time for our giving. Let's give into the kingdom. Let's give into the kingdom. Do it right now or go right now to publiclyprophecy.com. And as you're giving and we're worshiping with our giving, we're going to let Jeffrey or Israel or whoever it is. is uh, Jeffrey, you're going to sing, right? Oh I, oh, I got one for you. You got one for me? What happened to you? Uh-oh. Okay, it's all good. It's all good. Jeffrey's going to sing one for us. Are you serious? Rock and roll it or hit it hard, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the family. Here's one. You know, you're going to have to help me with this one, Paul. I'll try it from here. Okay, go ahead. are the king most high who am I he spoke this world to life where was I Lord almighty failures all my doubts still you chose me welcome to the family oh yes you are holy and pure I will stay Thank you, Jesus. The cross you endured to give me your name. And Lord, Redeemer, with all my failures. All my shame Still you chose me Else should I Lion and lamb King of kings Else should I Lion and Lamb, King of Kings, El Shaddai, Lion and Lamb, King of Kings, oh yes, Lord, El Shaddai, Lion and Lamb, King of Kings. I deserve the cross, you gave me grace. For all that you are, I am amazed. That still you chose me. Are you serious? Are you serious? What a beautiful song. Wow, he chose us all, didn't he?
everyone. Amen, amen, amen. Beautiful song, folks. Jeffrey, you're just amazing. Jeffrey Claire Coper, you can get their music if you go to our website at publiclyprophecy.com. Also, you can check them out on Facebook. I'm trying to remember the, what it's, you It's, uh, yeah, formerly Jacob Official. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to be uploading a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, we've got some projects coming up. Um, we've got a pro-life song um, that's... It's, it, it's got a whole lot of good in it. Uh, it's going to be a big project, so keep your eyes out for that because we've got to, oh, we got to save the babies. But, Amen, um, brother. But, Amen. yeah, it's it, it's an honor to be here, and I live here now, so I look forward to being being a big part of this ministry. You, I love it, man. You are, and uh, I tell you, folks, we're so glad that Jeffrey and his wife, Kelsey, oh, you, oh, 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 you, haven't, even met, you haven't met Kelsey yet. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blow yeah. the doors yeah, off this guys, place. Yeah, no, my, 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 my wife sings too, so uh, she and the kiddos will be flying in on the 24th. Praise God. So, yeah, uh, hopefully in the near future you guys will get to hear from her as well. Oh, we will. We will. And so you can always go, of course, to uh, Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. You can uh, watch the praise and worship the church services. In the Big on, Tent. In the Big Tent, ffctv.info. That's right here in uh, the epicenter of revival, the Florida outpouring. It's, it, I'm telling you, people are moving in from everywhere. They're moving in literally from everywhere. And uh, they, because they, they know this is an end time move of God. It's a salvation movement. People are coming to Christ. It's the greatest thing in the world. Folks, I want to bless the tithe and offering tonight. Uh, everyone gave, again, 22 salvations. It can't get any better than that. I mean, people coming to Jesus, that's what it's all about. Look, we're trying our best to just show you what's going on in the world, show you what the Bible says about it, and show you that there's a way of salvation through Jesus Christ. And Israel Hall and uh, Jeffrey Claire Coper, a really uh, talented, talented guy. No, he's not my son. No! He could be. I mean, he's, he's always the same age as my sons. Now, these are sons in the gospel. I, of course, I got my three sons also then uh, serving the Lord. And Brock's up there uh, taking care of uh, the Indiana part of it. And I'll be up there later in the spring and summer, and he'll be, I'll be working him overtime up there. But right now, here in the villages, uh, we're going to be working uh, closely here with these guys, and they're a blessing. Amen? All right, now, tomorrow's a big day for me. I'm interviewing... Um, Gil Brazard at noon recording it for the Planet X Summit. Then I'm interviewing uh, somebody. Oh, Stephen Bend at noon at 2 o'clock because it's for the summit. So, busy day. Yet I will find time to bring forth some YouTube videos and keep you up to speed because things are happening so fast. Busy, busy day. But I'll be back right here at 12 noon uh, on Tuesday for a live broadcast to get you up to speed and everything going on. But tomorrow I'll be doing videos in between re recordings. We ain't got time to mess around. You can't, you can't take a day off hardly. Except the Sabbath. Thank God for that. Sabbath. Give, give, thank you. Thank God the Lord gave us the Sabbath or you guys would never even give me that, Jeffrey. All right. Let, <laughs> are you serious? All right, guys. I'm going to let you go. Heidi, I love you. Thank you for the tacos before I got here tonight. It was awesome. And I love everybody out there. Just keep shouting. Father, can I bless you? Can I bless these uh, offerings right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, the tithe and offering. Lord, you said in your word that if we'd bring our first fruits, bring our tithe and offering into the storehouse, you commanded a blessing on us. You said, bring your first fruits, bring your tithe and offering into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. Lord, you said that if we do, you would open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. We wouldn't have room to even contain it. And Lord, you said that you would even rebuke the devourer, the devil, for our sakes. So Lord, I want to bring our tithe and offering to you tonight. I want to lift it up in the name of Jesus for the salvation of souls. We had 59 souls saved here last Thursday night on the Thursday night broadcast. 59 that we know of. 22 that we know of tonight. There may be more. And maybe someone who's watching the archives has also given their life to Christ and have typed it in the chat room. Lord, we just thank you for our moderators, for, our, for every one of them. And Lord, for our 97 
intercessory prayer warriors who pray around the clock, three and four an hour, that never stop interceding. Lord, we thank you for the divine healing that you're putting in the bodies of the saints, Lord, as you speak uh, your presence and your word and your anointing in them. Lord, I want to thank you for all my teachers this week, God, that are going to be teaching in the Paul Begley School of Prophecy. Give them the words and the, and, and the inspiration and the anointing of God that, Lord, that they can bring forth wonderful teaching to the individual students. And bless the students as they dig into the Word of God that they shall and they will be blessed. You said it, blessed is a man, Lord, who uh, meditates, you know, who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits even in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law, Lord, you said we meditate day and night. We're like a tree planted by the rivers of water. We shall not be moved. I want to thank you, God. Your word is true. Bless your people. Now, Lord, take this offering. Bless everyone's home, their jobs, their careers, their businesses, their property, Lord. May the, their inheritances come in. May their settlements they've been waiting on come in. May that property that needs to sell, sell at a good price. Lord, may they be blessed and highly favored who have given into the work of God. We ask it all in Jesus' name. And the people said, amen. And amen. All right. Praise God. All right. Are you serious? Don't forget, new believers, if you just got saved, since I saw his face, now I'm a believer. Okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to join up for the new believers class right there. Tara's got it in the chat room. See it? What? It's tomorrow night. Starts at 7 o'clock. Michelle and uh, Michelle and somebody good is, oh, and, 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 and Beautiful story is teaching that class. New believers, get in it. You might have been saved a year, two, three, but you're still wanting to know more about God, kind of getting your foot set, getting your feet set. We want to help you grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I got to get out of here, guys. I got a lot to do. God bless all of you. I'll see you. Are you serious? Thank you, guys. Love you, Jeffrey. Love you, Iz. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. See you, John boy. Wait, 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 see all of you, I love you guys, in Jesus' name, what?